Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Just when I thought we wouldn't have any news to present today, I was preparing for a skit. Now we have China FUD. So let's get into the FUD. But of course, look at the charts and the subtleties of a solid concrete slab being formed. Got a few other things to go through and a lot of news to cover this in the headlines. So stick around for the video and check us out till the end as I'll cover the charts at that point as well. Let's dive in. Make sure you get the YouTube numbers up, as my brother likes to say, Michael Pizzino on YouTube as well. Likes and subscribes, hit bell notification icon and all so you see the videos popping up in your feed. And thank you guys for reposting yourselves watching my channel on your Instagram stories. Got a Q&A going on over there at the moment. So the links to that are all down below. Let's get on with CoinGecko. Total market caps, $2 trillion. So we haven't fallen under that halfway point of around that $1.8 trillion. Looking good. Bitcoin, ETH, ADA, down a few percent. But the real important part is where did the low come in today compared to the 21st and the 7th? That's what we always look at, where the lows are, because anyone can look at red days and get freaked out. But you want to know where the lows are. That's where the, the base is forming. Is it getting higher? Okay, next thing we do is click over to Bitcoin. So this is just my daily routine. Where are we sitting in regards to Bitcoin values? Cardano is up against Bitcoin value. That's a good thing, especially when the fear is out there. Of course, all the stable coins are up. They just remain stable. Terra Luna has gone on a tear again of 15%. Cosmos, the other trade that I've been looking at here and I posted to the Patreon group uh, when it was at around 6,000 Satoshis. So we're currently up at nearly that 10,000 mark, up 7% today, also looking good. I also posted that on Twitter a few days later. And our other big one, the other big one that people have been looking at, Tezos. That's the other big one there, around 20%. Let's crack on with the fear and greed. And yesterday, we saw a fear at 33, previously 27, and then the 22nd was 21. So even though we're getting these really fearful days, the fear and greed index is going up. We, got, we were less the other days, and now we're getting less fear, even though everyone's still scared. I have a new sponsor of the channel, and that is Bybit. Links are down below. They obviously have leverage trading, so be very careful if you are looking to leverage trade. But some people have been asking, how do I make money, free money in crypto? And I saw this pop up, so I've talked to them over there. They are giving out Bit tokens, 3,500, and then there's also another giveaway on the BitBuy launch pool. These ones don't require you to be trading on Bybit. They're just going to look at an hourly snapshot shot of your wallet balance over a five-day period. And then you've also got staking Bit to earn Bit. So that's redeem redeemable anytime. And the last one is Bit airdrops. So this is for your trading. So you will have to trade to get a uh, 600 bit token giveaway as well. So people are wanting to know more about airdrops and giveaways and how to get free tokens, especially with decentralized exchanges and things like that. This is just one of those options. And if you use the links down below, there's also the option to get $600 for free as well when you deposit some uh, cryptocurrency on the Bybit exchange using the link down below. Let's move on to the news. And the first piece of news here is the China FUD, the biggest thing we've got going on at the moment. I thought I would have a day off news. Doesn't seem like that. The FUD has been going on forever. If you've been around 2017, you've seen it. If you've been around 2013, you have seen it. A dozen times in the last 12 years, China banned virtual currencies for the first time in 2009. That's when Bitcoin was released, released in January of 2009. 2013, the first Bitcoin specific ban hit in 2013, fake ban threats plagued 2014, that was the bear market. 2016, that was when the market was about to make its way up to the new all-time high. 2017, we had China FUD every single drop and the market wouldn't go down. But there is an important point to make out of all of this and that was the bear market in 2018. What does China FUD do in a bear market? That's what I have here. What happens with China FUD in a bear market? Bad news pushes the market down further. In a bull market, bad news drops the market for a brief period of time before it recovers and holds its ground and, and moves its way forward. That's a really easy and clear sign to know that you are in a, bear, a bull market or you're in the start of a new bull market as well. If you're getting bad news in a bull and it shows that the, and, and you see on the chart that the market isn't going down, there's another sign that there is a lot of strength in the market because they are brushing off 
the bad news. But we will get China FUD news in the bear market whenever that comes, whether it's 2022, 23, 24. And that bad news, this sort of exact same news about China FUD, it'll push the market down further. You'll know you're in a bear market as well then. So these are good times to understand the differences in market sentiment. Really important to know that now that you're being through it. The FUD raged on in 2019. China was allegedly behind the 2020 crypto bloodbath of the COVID pandemic over and over and over again. And you can see from all of these times, they were pretty good times to be buying cryptocurrency in that cycle. The other thing that perpetuates all of the FUD are the scan of the headlines. So this just amplifies it. That's what I got there. You can go across all of the news sources, China crackdown, China this, China that. I'm sure there are people scanning this sort of uh, news and the headlines and then making trades on it as well. Again, Coindesk's front page is all just China FUD. China latest crypto ban is most severe. Bitcoin drops two grand. China declares cryptocurrency business illegal. China FUD here. And so I'll bring up FTX because I think this is another reason that pushes the price down further. Let me get to the point. FTX is relocating from Hong Kong to Bitcoin friendly Bahamas. Take that as a note. They are getting out of Chinese territories. And so they're over there so that they can then set up their exchange even further with regulations, etc. as Binance continues to get cagey about its location or trying to build itself up as a centralized exchange. It has confirmed that. So FTX is on the front foot now. I think we're going to see further prices, even though we've seen the fall on FTX. But back to my point here uh, around high impact news trading. So you've got the CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried, SBF. He obviously has Alameda Research, which is a trading company. And so these guys I have seen, or so I've heard them talk about it on uh, podcasts, they will trade high news, high impact news events. It's something that happens in Forex trading all the time. You get big news events and traders will trade specifically off these events. So you have big news headlines of China FUD banning cryptocurrency. Then this is going to be scanned across news platforms. And this is also in Forex. There's a whole Forex calendar of high impact news events. And then these are sort of things that come up out of the blue. Their companies are going to be trading this news, which then pushes the price down even further just because they are shorting the opportunity. They're shorting the market on the opportunity. They don't, they don't care about holding it long term for their specific trading portfolio. Whereas we're looking to hold, it, uh, hold the Bitcoin long term or maybe some of us are. So that is going to come into effect as well to continue to push the price down, even if the, they know the FUD is just FUD. They're just trading off the news high impact news events. So looking at this low come in here, this was yesterday's China FUD news and we got a, a little bit of a down day at the moment, but you can see the low came in onto the 50% and that is the 50% of the rally range. This is the rally. All right, and then we got 50% bounce, another bounce so far and it's looking good. We got more volume coming in here compared to the rest of the period of this move up, which we have now cleared out and started to form another uh, concrete slab down here, another nice base. And so that was the FUD day. You can see that the low was higher than the previous low. So far, a good sign. Um, even if this starts to uh, taper down a little bit more, it might be something like we saw through May and July. And although the lows got a little lower, the timing just took forever for the market to do anything. So I'm still patient. I'll still buy on these sorts of days because I, I want to buy when the fear is up there and everyone's scared because I don't know if I'll get the opportunity again. And you've got people that are still waiting to see a 37 or a 38K Bitcoin before they buy. For me, it's down another 12%. I'm not overly concerned. If it does get that far, I'll buy some more. But that just allows me to keep buying Bitcoin on the down days rather than doing the dollar cost averaging method where I'm just buying it at every single period up here. So uh, that's just something that I'm looking at for getting into the markets. 47,500 is my safe level above uh, for Bitcoin just to say, yeah, I'm pretty much seeing that we're out of the, uh, out of the problems here. But so far, we got some early signs, which means the risk is higher because we're not at that level, but the reward will be higher as well. If you wait till these levels, then the risk is lower, but of course the reward is also slightly lower as well. Ethereum is looking pretty similar. You can see that pattern there. 
volume on the lows coming in, volume again on yesterday's China FUD coming in, market above 50% of the range down. It's a carbon copy of Bitcoin at this point, except it's not in the exact same position. Bitcoin slab was here, Ethereum, you know, about here, it had this little peak up and down. So compared to the last few days, looking very similar. On to Cardano, exactly what we we're looking at yesterday. Market down, market has broken through that downtrend, came back, tested it, higher close, massive volume. The slab is getting uh, laid and poured and solidified at these levels. This is the hopium periods for me. Here, when everyone else is feeling hopeful and I'm trying to not sound su such like a, a downer, I will just hold my tongue, but this is where I get excited. When I see a lot of these, uh, these, these stable signs coming in, especially with support and resistance, and then breakouts to stop the downtrend. Just like we saw here, this was fast. The market got a little slower and a little slower again. And then eventually, oops, we got the breakout around $1.50. All the move happened through this period here. That was where the market moved a lot. And then there was not much at the, at the top. And this wasn't too bad either. Now, a few more altcoins to get through. We're looking at CKB as this is a interoperability blockchain and has built a bridge from other blockchains. And of course, to Cardano. So it's known quite well in the Cardano ecosystem. It isn't looking the best, unfortunately, for CKB holders. A lot of these spikes look very suspicious and you can see what has happened after each of the spikes. Huge volume, market spikes up, and this is weak retail hands. Well, it's dumb money actually buying it because the market continues down after that one day of the spike. Again, one massive spike. This would be some sort of news announcement. You could look back around the 9th, probably some big news that was across many, many channels has just pumped the price and then it's just faded off afterwards. So the, uh, the smart money is selling into all of the dumb money that is buying up on these spikes. We had another one just a few days ago and down she goes. And look, we just got a lower low compared to the 20th and 21st of September, whereas on the other charts, we had a slightly higher low. Will this continue down? It looks like it at this stage. I will. I can't say for sure because I don't know what the future holds in this black space. But just looking at the differences on the charts, I would say this is probably heading a little bit lower. I would be concerned if the market began to break down from these bottoms, which were put in in July and February before the big run up. You can also see this spike here. This was in the bull market too. Huge volume in the market still sold off after that. Sure, we had this big run up, but eventually we have basically come almost all the way back to that level. Massive volume, another massive spike, market sells off. So it's just the same pattern repeating again and again and again through CKB. So be safe if it is something that you're looking to get into, especially with the Cardano ecosystem and just look out for lows uh, if they get broken down. On to FTX. And first up, I got Lewis Hamilton here wearing FTX on his cap. But of course, we love the F1 and personally, I'm a... Max Verstappen fan and Red Bull Racing. Maybe I'll have to get myself some Tezos, as I mentioned earlier on, 20% increases on the day. Massive there. But F1's on this weekend. Are you guys uh, hoping for Hamilton to win or Max Verstappen to win? Let me know in the comments down, uh, down below. Let's get tribal on this one while we look at the price of FTT. Check it out. Higher low, similar pattern to Bitcoin and ETH now. Another higher low, whereas FTX is has come back to sit on the bulk before it took off. All right, so that's a nice strong sign. Good volumes coming in here. Again, if these levels started to break down between uh, 48 and around 44, I'd be way more concerned. But for now, I'm okay with this one, even though we are under the old all-time high, which I didn't like. We are starting to see the volume come in and some of the lows hold. Okay, so it's a bit shaky, but we want the higher reward. We're going to have to partner with the higher risk, right? Moving on to Adam. This is broken to new all-time highs in the Bitcoin chart. It's Bitcoin pair. Absolutely fantastic for Adam holders, which is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, something that I talked about for the Patreon crew. You guys can still join. Links are down below. So back to Adam hitting new all-time highs. This has helped with my FOMO for Luna 
because Luna has been going gangbusters as well. It's done pretty well against its Bitcoin value, just getting a little below the previous all-time high. Whereas with Adam, it has just pushed to new all-time highs compared to where it was just a few days ago. So it's a little stronger at this point. But I love the look of, of Luna as well. Just I want to see it get above that level of around 10,000 or 100,000 Satoshis, I should say. This is zeros missing on this. Um, so yeah, being an Adam has helped with my FOMO for wanting to get into Luna. And it, it, it is a good project as well. So we'll continue to follow these on the channel. I'll continue to update Patreon guys and TIA Premium on the Luna position as well, whether I'm getting into that or not, because it does look quite good. Uh, so if you guys haven't already, join us on Twitter, on Instagram. We've got a Q&A at the moment, which I'm answering over there. So make sure you're on, on both of the platforms so you can get updates. Like I mentioned, you've got the free Investor Accelerator newsletter comes out once every two weeks. And that basically wraps us up for today's video. A huge thank you to all you guys for your time and support. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend if you're in Australia or weekend coming up if you're in other parts of the world. Like, share, subscribe if you found some value from the video. I thought there'd be no news today. We've got a massive video. Have a great weekend. I'll see you at the next one. And until then, have more fun to get more done.